Hi there, I'm Glenn Keating, host of The ENCODE and a clinical educator here at Delaware County EMS. Uh, we're at Ohio Health Grady Medical Center, or Grady Memorial Hospital, at, uh, here in Delaware, and I'm joined by a uh, registered nurse in the ER, Amy Zoller, who's also a uh, SANE nurse, and uh, is gonna teach us about a unique protocol uh, within our uh, patient care guidelines that talks about accessing implanted and existing central catheters. Um, so, a couple quick disclaimers, first of all, um, for our Delaware County EMS people, uh, please refer to your protocol, pages 101 and 102. Uh, that will give you the full procedure that we're going to explain here as well, but it's in a good reference form. Uh, for those of you that may be watching from outside of our department, uh, please remember that you do need specific protocols to do these procedures, so please work with your medical directors um, to uh, de determine exactly what they would like for you to do. Uh, but as far as what we're going to be doing here at Delaware County EMS, uh, Amy, let's talk about some of the things we have here. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the preparation work uh, involved with um, accessing one of these central catheters. So basically, these are different kinds, but what we're going to talk about is the implanted port. Okay. But each of these are central lines, okay. um, and a central line is just what it sounds like. It is central circulation, okay. it's going directly into the heart. Okay. So um, it just goes to show the importance of sterile technique and just the risk that can be involved. In so high, there's a high incidence, if not done right, yes. uh, of infection, of embolism, things like that, yes. correct? Okay. Yes. Sounds good. Okay. So what, uh, what are the common ports that we do see on patients that get discharged and that we might have to run on? Majority of the time, pick lines. Okay. Um, pick lines are peripheral inter inserted central catheters. Okay. This one's actually showing it pretty low. Typically a pick line is going to be right about here. Okay. Um, and same thing, this tunnels all the way up into the superior vena cava okay. and into the heart. Gotcha. Um, this one is a Hickman. Um, we don't see too many Hickmans, but what you might see is somebody that has a temporary dialysis catheter. Okay. And what you would see is you would see two of these. Okay. Um, in an emergency, you can use these. Um, I stress em emergency okay. um, because they are the only way of giving dialysis to that patient and um, the nephrology doctors are very particular okay. with them. The biggest thing I can say about, and again, it's gonna be a dual, a dual catheter when you see a dialysis one and the family will know, the family or patient are gonna know mm -hmm. that it's a dialysis catheter. Okay. Um, you have to withdraw before you give anything. Okay. Even in an emergency, you have to withdraw. Okay. The reason why there's a very, very high dose heparin okay. in this catheter, um, usually somewhere between 20 and 30,000 units. Okay. So if you just go ahead and flush it, you're flushing all that heparin into the patient. Okay. So you just have to withdraw um, at least five to 10 cc's. Um, usually we'd say 10. Right. And then you can use the catheter in an emergency like okay. a coding type of situation. Very good. Um, and then what we see most often is the implanted ports, okay. um, and obviously you can't feel it, but I can kind of demonstrate here okay. that that's where the, the port is. Yeah. You can kind of do this and see where it is. Um, you're, it's always going to feel a little bit, um, it's almost like a, kind of like a soft material that the needle goes into. It's going to be right in the center of the catheter. And what this is, this is essentially the same thing as these. Um, oh, I missed that one. Basically, it's just, it's under the skin. That's okay. the only difference. It's going into the superior vena cava as okay. well. And we skip this one. You typically aren't gonna see this out on the scene. This is gonna be something put in in um, an emergency type of situation okay. or an ICU. Gotcha. And it's a, um, a central venous catheter, triple lumen, so. Um, so let's talk about, uh, you know, what are, what are procedures going to be to access okay. uh, these different so our setup in the hospital is obviously going to be different than your setup on the field. Um, the most important thing is keeping things sterile. Um, you have to do it, not clean technique, but sterile technique. So do your best to either wash your hands or at least use, if, if worst case, you can't wash your hands, an antibacterial hand cleanser before you're doing it. Um, my understanding is the kits are going to come something like this okay. for you guys to use. Um, the first thing you're going to do is open up a sterile field, which is going to be done with a trauma dressing. Okay. First thing, put a mask on. Okay. All right. So then there's my sterile field. Um, next thing I'm going to do is open up my gloves. So we're going to go ahead 
That's how you sterilely open is you kind of hold on to it with the sterile part and you just drop it, okay? Don't touch this down to it because then now I've contaminated it if I touch this to it, okay? This is gonna be our dressing that's gonna cover it up. Yours is actually gonna be this size, but just to show sterile technique, we grab this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop that on it, but then I'm replacing it with this just so we've got the right size stuff. This is gonna be our cleaner. Same thing, everything just gets dropped. But this comes in like a little, um, it'll be in like a single package. Okay. So we'll open up the package and drop it. So similar. Similar to everything else, yes. And then this is gonna be our power port. need to be sterile like this doesn't need to be sterile I'll explain this in a minute you can set that aside over here this is non non sterile clean but non sterile our question is um, sounds like it's gonna we're gonna work on getting sterile saline flushes okay. um, because it is important that these if not sterile we're gonna show you kind of two different ways we're gonna act like it's sterile right now okay these clear packages are not sterile. Okay. They're clean, they're not sterile, okay? But we're gonna play like it's sterile right and now. And we're talking about the outside of the syringe itself, not just exactly. the saline inside of it. The saline inside is sterile, it's the outside of the syringe that's not sterile, so. Um, so we're gonna open up a couple of these and just drop them. Okay, so um, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put on my sterile gloves. So basically, you're gonna just open it up Again, you don't want to now lay this on your sterile field because then I will have contaminated my field, okay? So whether you come over here to the clean area and do it, anything you touch, you've now contaminated. It's no longer sterile, okay? So I'm going to pick up my first glove. And what you're going to do is you pick it up here and then your hand, you're just going to put your hand in, okay? And you slide your glove on. So I'm touching where it's folded down, cupped, okay? Then for picking up my next glove, to keep everything sterile, I'm gonna tuck it under that cup, pick it up, and my hand's kind of tucked under there, and then you're gonna slide on. Okay, so then both hands are sterile. Okay. So now, as much as you want to pick that up and get rid of it, just leave it alone, okay? Because your chances of now contaminating it is likely, okay? So everything I touch here now is sterile, okay? So what you're gonna do is pick up your port. This little end is just gonna twist off and this twist onto that, okay? And that makes it a needless system, okay? And then what you always need to do, this is super important, you have to flush it before you access, okay? Because you would give a patient an error list if you didn't, okay? So basically, you're gonna go ahead and you just flush it. You can kind of set it over here until it's squirting out. And then you're all the way flushed through. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell the patient to go ahead and turn their head away from the port. Okay. So they're gonna turn their head this way. I'm gonna take this, break it open. And this is chlorhexidine is what this is. You're gonna take it where my port is. I think my port's right there. Okay. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to start in the center. I'm going to wipe out in a circular fashion. And you kind of want to push down a little bit to get that liquid out there. And you're going to just spread all the way out. It's now dirty, so put it on your non-sterile field. You do need to let this dry. If you don't let it dry, it's basically like you didn't use it, okay? As much as we want to kind of get in a hurry and get it done with, you have to let it dry. So usually about 30 to 45 seconds, it will have dried. And then if you can open that up. Once it dries, we're going to fast forward. It's dry now. Um, 
And the way, I don't know if you saw that, but the way we just did it, he opened it, I grabbed only this, so I'm staying sterile. Now, if I picked up that alcohol swab and opened it, I'm not sterile anymore. So you're gonna take this swab, just one time wipe it off. If you're only doing chlorhexidine, you really don't have to do the alcohol. That's only if you're doing the betadine. You do one swipe across to, to clean it, okay? Again, the patient needs to be having their head turned away because otherwise any, we have bacteria in our mouth, they're breathing that right on it, okay? The way I do it is I'm gonna feel, again, my glove is sterile, and this is now a sterile, well, it's not a sterile, but it's a clean feel. I'm gonna touch where the middle of that port is, okay, and now I'm gonna put this needle right in the middle. And you feel like a, um, it's kind of like a clink or definitely a resistance when you get to the back of it. Um, and that is, that's a good sign. That means that you're in, okay? Um, this little flange can push down to where it's taunt against the skin. The first thing you need to do is draw back to get blood, okay? If you don't get blood, you can do a couple things. You don't have to immediately pull it. Tell the patient, take a deep breath, move your arm up. There's a couple of different things that can, you know, because sometimes there's, it's like a, um, it's a pressure issue. They, things just kind of have to be repositioned um, and then go ahead and pull back. Do a couple of different maneuvers of trying to get some blood back. But if you don't get blood back, you need to pull it, okay? Because that does, it, blood is the only way to indicate that it's in. So we're gonna flush it with 20, okay? We're done with that. You can just kind of let that hang there. And then what I'm gonna do, now I no longer have to be sterile. You still, well, my hands are no longer sterile because now I've touched things, but you still don't wanna be sticking your hand on that, okay? That still needs to be a sterile dressing. This would just go right. I kind of curve this up like this, however you do it. Basically the notch here is the notch that you're gonna put your tubing through. Like this. And these dressings never go on good. And then basically what you're gonna do is get, grab a hold of this notch, peel your dressing off. And it doesn't have to be pretty. It just needs to be covering everything. Okay. And what I oftentimes will do, I'll take a little piece of tape just so that's not just hanging there. I'll usually take a little piece of tape and just put it here. And then your IV. And now you can take your mask off. Um, and then your IV can just hook in again. Okay.